Let's take a look at the, some of these internal muscles. Um, we have a few muscles here that are attached to the styloid process. This is the styloid process here. Remember that little tooth-like projection that we found associated with the temporal bone. Okay, so the styloid process has two muscles, the stylohyoid muscle and the styloglossus muscle. The stylohyoid muscle raises the hyoid. And notice the origin and insertion are once again in the names of these muscles. Styloid for the origin, hyoid for the insertion. Styloid for the origin, glossus, which is the tongue, for the insertion. So this will, the styloid glossus will pull the tongue backward. The stylohyoid will actually help to elevate the hyoid and um, protract it, actually retract it to some degree. Okay, uh, let's take a look at another muscle here. This one is the floor of the mouth and this is the myohyoid. The myohyoid has its origin in the chin area here, which is following the myohyoid line of the mandible, and then, of course, its insertion is going to be the um, hyoid bone itself. The term milo refers to molars of your teeth, so myelohyoid. And then this one is genioglossus, uh, this particular one goes back to the tongue again. So the genu of the chin here, um, which is in back of the mental region, if you will. Um, and then this goes back to the tongue. So genioglossus muscle. If we turn the head this way a bit, we can see again the myohyoid muscle, myelohyoid muscle here. But then we see these kind of strap-like muscles. And there's one here and there's one, let's see if I can, see that well. Yes, one here and one here. And these two muscles are essentially the same. They're, the, they're different bellies of the same muscle. And because there's two bellies of the same muscle, we call this the digastric. Now the digastric muscle has an origin at the um, digastric fossa behind the chin, as well as uh, the mastoid process and the insertion is the hyoid bone. So interestingly enough, when these two bellies contract together, the hyoid bone is raised, but when the back one contracts and this one relaxes, the mouth opens. Okay, there are a few muscles that we can see that we just saw on that other sort of redhead model. And again, this is our digastric muscle right here. This is the digastric. And we can see um, a bit of the um, stylohyoid. This is the stylohyoid, I better differentiate this for you. This is the stylohyoid here, and then this fatter one that's more, um, actually a little bit more medial, is the back muscle of the digastric. So this would be digastric muscle here. We can also see the myelohyoid. Now let's turn this guy this way and we'll see a few more of these muscles. The very bottom muscle again is the myelohyoid, following the myelohyoid line back to the hyoid bone. We have a new one now. This is the geniohyoid. The geniohyoid going from the genu of the chin. The term genu means knee. Can you see the knee of the chin here, right? So going from the genu of the chin to the hyoid bone. And then um, we also see the genioglossus that we saw earlier. And that's again from the genu of the chin to the tongue. Let's talk a little bit about the actions of this one. The genioglossus muscle actually helps to depress the tongue and, de and to protrude the tongue. Uh, this particular one here, the geniohyoid muscle, helps to elevate the hyoid bone and also to uh, protract it to some degree. And then this particular one, the myelohyoid, actually helps to close, or I should say, um, depress the floor of the mouth, okay? Um, so when your mouth flattens out the, the floor of your mouth, especially when you're swallowing, um, so is that really depression? It's more, probably more of an elevation now that I think about it. Okay, good, great. We'll take a look at one more little model here that shows us a few of these muscles. The particular model has some interesting structures on it. Here's our temporalis muscle coming down again to that coronoid process. And then of course the masseter muscle here 
demonstrating where it attaches to the zygomatic arch down to the angle of the uh, mandible and a little bit more medial as well. But the thing I really like about this particular model is that it demonstrates two other muscles that are named actually for their origins. There's the medial pterygoid and the lateral pterygoid. Now I'm going to qualify this statement in just a moment, this, but nonetheless, if you can appreciate, there's the vomer bone, then going lateral to that is the medial pterygoid and then followed by the lateral pterygoid. Now look, here is the medial pterygoid muscle. The medial pterygoid muscle, like the masseter, helps to close the jaw. So this is a synergist for the masseter muscle. It is not, however, originating on the medial pterygoid, rather it is originating on the medial aspect of the lateral pterygoid. Now on the lateral aspect of the lateral pterygoid is the actual lat lateral pterygoid muscle. And rather than going down to the jaw like this, this one goes across. And so let's take a look here. Can, see, can you see how this goes across this way like this, huh? So we go from the uh, lateral pterygoid to the um, mandibular condyle. This is the mandibular condyle here. And so this one actually helps to open the jaw. So lateral pterygoid opens the jaw and the medial pterygoid closes the jaw. The way I can remember this is the lateral pterygoid has an L at the beginning, so when I say the word loud, I'm opening the jaw. When I say the word munch, I'm closing the jaw. So munch for medial and loud for lateral. Okay, thanks. All right, so if we take a look here, we see a, a relatively nice styloglossus muscle here and stylohyoid here. This is our old friend, the digastric muscle here. And unfortunately, this one doesn't show us a whole lot, but we've got a few things going. Um, and I think this is cryptic enough that I'm gonna let that go. Uh, we are going to see a few other muscles though. Actually, we can see uh, the belly of the digastric muscle right here. We can see the floor. Of the, my, of the myelohyoid muscle here. And then if we spin this head around, there's just a few muscles exposed. We can see, again, the nice large masseter muscle. Now the parotid gland, which is one of our digestive glands that secretes a digestive enzyme called amylase, that one is going to be located right on top of the masseter muscle. And then here, it looks like I'm seeing the zygomaticus muscles. So that's zygomaticus major. It's likely this is zygomaticus minor right here. All right, so that kind of concludes our review of the muscles of the face. And uh, best of luck.